All right, but it's the first video. Let's check it out. A documentary. Wait. How long is this video? 22 minutes? Stealth, are you kidding me? 22 minutes. God damn. Look. I'm going to watch it, but just know for future videos, try to limit the length of the videos at least because thing is also like documentaries man it can it can be a difficult thing to get on youtube as well without like issues with copyrights and such guys look i have not said before that there is a limitation on the timing but i'm saying it now so i will react to this right now uh but just for future live streams so that other people also <laughs> So it's fair to everybody, right? Uh, if everybody suggests 20, 20 minutes videos, we're pretty limited. So let's let's check it out either way. Miss Cherry Flores, these on. Disclaimer, this video is solely based on my own personal research. I might miss mentioning other artists and it's possible to have a few discrepancies, but I did my best to get as much accurate information as possible. So enjoy. Not yes, bad. I will only talk about idol groups that did it all. Sing, dance, and more. Okay. Support local. That's the most common expression when it comes to inviting Filipino people to like and support our own artists. In my point of view, that's one of the biggest excuses for mainstream media that allows them to get away with below standard P-pop idol groups. In my 30 years of life, there wasn't a group that deserved worldwide recognition by possessing world-class quality talent. Mm -hmm. Well, not until the P-pop kings showed up. But before we talk about the juicy part, let me take you on a journey to find out what it was like before SB19's rise to fame. My name is Chuck and this is the evolution of P-pop. Okay. But it is an interesting video, I'm sure, but... Before TikTok, dance challenges even got invented. Sex Bomb has done it with their spaghetti song. The lyrics of the okay. song triggered showdown when it comes to birthday parties and barangay dance contests. Oof. They were a nationwide phenomenon. Even kids know the lyrics of their songs. And did you know that Sex Bomb was actually the best selling girl group in Asia for 11 consecutive years until K pop became mainstream? Okay. And that's when Girls' Generation and 21 showed up. So, so they are also from uh, the Philippines then. I mean, they're talking about K-pop right now. Look, I'm not gonna pause this. This is already pretty long, but... Do anyone? And did you know that Dara of 21 actually started in the Philippines by joining ABS-CBN's talent search show called Star Circle Quest? <laughs> and after that, she had a good career as an actress with music in her back burner. until she moved back to Korea to pursue her aspirations as a performer. But guys, did you know that P-pop idol groups didn't actually start with Sex Bomb? It goes way back to 1960s. The Rocky Damn. Fellers. The Rocky Fellers. <laughs> Okay. This was around the time when the Americans occupied the Philippines and the Rockefellers were absolute idols of the American people. Who were those other wonderful people you were singing with? Of course, I know Eddie here. They are my brother. uh -huh. Brothers. Mm -hmm. Except one brother. He's my father. Oh. <laughs> you said you're a talented family. Where did you learn how to sing like that? Hey, yeah. 
Philippines. Let me help you. Oh, in the Philippines? Yeah. That rock and roll really gets around, doesn't it? In fact, their smash hit right. single, Killer Joe, reached number 16 in the Billboard Hot 100 in April 1963. They were total live performers, mixing up dancing, singing, and performing as a band. It's cool, yeah. In the 1970s, nothing much happened when it comes to the idol industry because it was dominated by ballad artists such as Nora Honor. Oh. <laughs> I said I won't, po won't pause the video, but if YouTube decides to, tro to throw an ad in it, <laughs> I cannot help it. <laughs> of course. Okay, let's keep going. So this is the 70s. Pelita Corrales, Basil Valdez, Freddy Aguilar, and Ray Valera. In the 1980s, Ryan Kayabyab assembled the co-ed group who can sing and dance at the same time. They were called Smoky Mountain, with the notable member Geneva Cruz. We had a whole history of uh, Philippine music here. The 90s has been the turning point of the OPM scene. It was mainly led by Eraser Heads, which was considered as the Philippine Beatles, but we are not gonna talk about them because they are not considered as a P-pop idol group. But right. there were multiple right. promising idol groups that emerged in this decade. One was the R&B all-girl group Vana Vana. It was in the 90s already. Another one was the late bloomer pop group with a western sound Fruitcake. Also, 21 was a K-pop group, not Filipino, not Filipino. And who's gonna forget these three? Infinix. <laughs> they were known as JCS, <laughs> Watch which it serve as a half times of their first names, John Pratt, Carlo Aquino, nah, and on. Stefano Mori. They Cannot were also do that with popular music. in their coming-of-age TV hit series, G-Mick. The 90s was also the golden age of dance groups such as Street Boys with notable members Vong Navarro, John Hilario, Spencer Reyes, and Danilo Barrios. Man, was this international or not? Pro not yet probably? Or not? I mean, we knew nothing about this in Europe. Who's not gonna be amazed of Bong's backflips, Jong's breakdances, and Danilo's visuals? Along with Street Boys, Abstract was also popular with notable members Ding Dong Dantes, Arthur Solinap, Dino Guevara, and Sherwin Ordonez. UMG was also a thing with a notable member Wawi de Guzman and Maneuvers with notable member Joshua Zamora, who's now the husband of Job Pie of Sex Bomb. Speaking of Sex Damn. Bomb, the okay. latter part of this decade was definitely dominated by them with these hit songs. <laughs> and we know what happened next. K-pop became mainstream. Yeah, but when? When did it change? We were talking about the 90s. And because of that, Viva Records boss Vic Del Rosario created a sub-music label called Pipa. Can you believe it? They actually Damn. created a music label called Pipa. And he signed Pop Girls, you would think which that was the group where Nadine Lustre was included. Wait, where is she from? 
did look from the Philippines, but is it was it just me? Accelerate. She looked more Western. And RPM. So was, this was a mix group. All of them underwent normal training with more emphasis on performing rather than acting. But when they started releasing songs, okay. the public criticized the groups for looking and sounding very close to their K-pop inspirations. Okay. So, three years into the industry, Viva realized it wasn't profitable. So they just swept the music label under the rug. Okay. After Viva's P-pop label's dissolution, Universal Music's 143 showed up with their smash hit Sa Isang Sulyap Mo. It became one of the top selling albums in record stores such as Odyssey, Astro Plus, and Astro Vision. Viva said, Hold up, we're not giving up. So they proceeded to debut Chixer, who rose to fame from a dance video of the popular song Teach Me How to Dougie. Oh, yeah. Kind of recognized the moves. ABS-CBN also started the show Pinoy Boy Band Superstar that produced the group Boy Band PH. And how many boy groups are there in the Philippines? I mean, or girl groups for that matter. Oh my god, come on. <laughs> YouTube pauses for us. Man, am I missing a lot here in the chat? Um... Let's see here. Oh, I think I missed quite a bit before. A couple of n other super chats going on right now, but let's continue here. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. They later debuted Gimme 5. And Showtime's hashtags and girl trends that were composed of star magic talents and Pinoy Big Brother X housemates. Okay. That's a lot different. Check this out. Okay, this. I'm gonna break through. Losing connection. Went on a different direction. Break, break, break through. Don't do it for me. I was about to say that boy group was. Uh... By this time, the substandard peep up formula became very familiar. Started more like party. Just put a bunch of young mode. teenagers into Madini Idol type of training with a little more emphasis on singing and dancing, then they're all set. So the train of peep up idol group debuts continued as Viva launched the girl group's peep up generation. <laughs> Charm 
Storm. I, I, I don't know what the copyrights are going to do with this video, but... Uh, and even partnered with Sex Bomb New Gen. I was just thinking, SB doesn't stand for Sex Bomb, does it? SB19? Later this decade, MNL48 emerged and garnered significant support from Filipino fans and even overseas, mainly because they had a distinct sound and was co-managed by a foreign agency that used a Japanese training format. Okay. They seem more like some kind of flash mob thingy. They definitely rose above their predecessors, but still couldn't quite crack the world class code, which okay. was temporarily made possible by Filipino soloists Billy Crawford. <laughs> I don't know this either, though. And Jake Zyrus. Sounds more international, this. TV5 also ran the show Born to Be a Star, which created the groups Nitro and UGG. These guys are pretty young still, right? Well, they started young. Looking at the title of the show, it was clear that the born mainstream media still wants people to believe that, that one has to be born as a star to be a star. But is that really the case? Do I know October that show? 26, 2018. SB19 debuted after undergoing four years of Korean training. Wait, when was this? But is that really the case? October 26, 2018. 2018. SB19 debuted after undergoing okay. four years of Korean training style under ShowBT Entertainment. So Korean this involved style. This a though. significant financial investment and a harrowing preparation process. When I said harrowing, it meant putting their attitude, guts, and determination to the test, maximizing the limits of their physical capability, and challenging their mental toughness. All of it to unleash their true potential, not just as performers, but also as people with whom fans can relate. Their company clearly believed that okay. stars can be created. Their first single was Tila Luha. They perform in malls, schools, nursing homes, and even orphanages We've seen that one, with right? little to no audience, which serve as their initial efforts to promote their group. Yes, we've seen this one. I mean, not this performance, of course, but... The song was oh, a vocal powerhouse. Wait, what was that? The song was a vocal powerhouse. Oh, yeah. oh we've seen this performance. But the reception they got wasn't outstanding. Probably because Filipino artists were already expected to be very good vocally. So okay. no heads were turned. <laughs> Not I mean, until September 2, 2019. A lot, a lot of karaoke. This was when SB19's Go Up dance practice got uploaded on YouTube. This was what they called their last shot. If it wasn't gonna work, they would have called it quits. This routine showed all fruits of their harrowing labor. They practiced it at least 1,000 times and it was pure perfection. Mm -hmm. 
this quickly went viral which allowed them to break into the music industry not just locally but internationally yes that was probably my ma favorite music video from the love that i've seen wish bus it's been a whirlwind week for P-Pop stars SB19, leading up to the two-day show titled Our Zone on November 27 and 28. So excited to finally reveal the finalists for top social artists. This year's 2021 finalists, we have the Filipino boys, just like me, representing SB19. Let's do this. Okay. After SB19 paved the way and set the new standards, the P-pop industry followed by producing modern top quality talents such as the rich and culture multilingual group Alamat. Wait, they're, they're multilingual? <laughs> Along with huh. BGYO. Beanie. Now every step take, Is it from the same label? First one. Okay. Oh my god, again. That's the, That's the thing with with longer videos, right? You have these advertisements in between. Man, I don't know how far we're in the in the video into the video. Oh, we're almost there actually. One and a half minutes to go. All right, let's keep going. Press hit play. Luna. Daydream Our rules There's so many different ones Fourth impact. Let's. Where is the group that I saw uh, recently? Was it on the um, vision? Yeah. One of the previous yeah. live streams, I think. Who's the king? Who's the boss? He can call, call, call. My name? Also with the wish bus. Uh, and because of that, 2022 has become the golden age of P-pop performance. So let me ask you again. Are stars born? I don't think so. Are stars created? Yes. But it's just half of the equation. As SB19 Josh said in their song, failure is a winner by permission. Dreams come true. It's a matter of decision. So are you a star? Well, you decide. This has been Chuck. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, hit okay. the notification bell to get more content like this one. And I will not take more of your time. Make sure to smash that like button because you know what I like on my side is the algorithm. Talk to you in the next one. Peace out. That's an interesting point he makes. Uh, are stars born or are they like made? And it's definitely a decision. It's definitely a decision. Like you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, you will not get anywhere. Makes sense. Uh, and if you uh, and if you don't have a lot of talent, a lot of hard work can still get you somewhere. Um, I've seen that multiple times. Uh, like of course you have people like with with singing you can you can learn it kind of but it's if someone is is 
I don't know. I don't know if everybody can can become a star like that with with a lot of training. But there's it's a good point though. It's a good point. You don't have to be the best singer or dancer uh or don't have to have the be- the, the most talent to get far. Uh you have to work hard. A worth a work ex- a work aesthetic, let let's say, a work-minded um way of thinking. <laughs>